Shalom Aleichem, greetings everyone. This is Shlomo Katz. You're listening to the Soul of Israel on the Land of Israel.com on the Land of Israel Network. We have got a really special, special show today. Because today is not just another day on the calendar. Today is a day, 23 years ago, that one of the greatest lights that, ev- that the world was ever, ever, ever privy to ascended up high, back to the chambers in heaven, yet spreading his light in ways, in unimaginable, unimaginable ways, reaching people much more than ever before. And of course, we're speaking about the life and legacy of the Lubavitcher Rebbe Rebbe Menachem Mendel Schneerson of blessed and saintly memory. Before we even have the chutzpah to start talking about the Rebbe today, and I'm joined once again with my holy brother, sweet friend, Rabbi Jeremy Gimpel, we got to sing a big, a big Chabad nigun, a nigun, that a, a song that actually describes the Rebbe's Life. the sheer we just had in your shul I, Sundays, Tuesdays Our and shul. Thursdays are Our are, shul. They've, they've turned into my favorite days I have three days a week where um, my days are doesn't at this point on I might as well just go back home and go back to bed meaning my day is <laughs> already a huge success oh, you're so sweet and uh, well, I just, today was special the, the so learning we did today was very special and, and I love I also see now that new faces are kind of coming in and there's a, like a core group that's there but uh, something is growing something can be sensed there something is so special and we talk about uh, the Rebbe and his vision for Geula I, I just feel it so powerfully in your kehila. This was the vision of what it would be like for a Jewish community, free in their land, focused on personal growth, f- focused on their relationship with Hakadosh Baruch Hu, their relationship with Am Yisrael. What it is to come together with such a consciousness as a kehila, as a community, it's like it's beyond. It's well, you awesome. play a, you play a, a huge role in that more than you realize, and um, today's learning was really. Uh, which I'm sure a little bit will, will slip in today's segment, even though it's not exactly what we're going to be talking about. But we've discussed, you know, the Rebbe, Baba Rebbe was the one that brought the consciousness of the concept of Mashiach, of redemption, to the forefront of the Jewish world and probably the world at large. You know, dearest friends, sweetest friends, when we say the word Messiah, Mashiach, it's still a little bit freaky. It's still not as mainstream as we need to be, and because the truth is, us Jewish people have suffered tremendously over the years from the concept of false messiahs. So and many disappointments. Correct, and I think that, you know, this happens to us all the time, as psychological, this is like a psychology of defense mechanisms, where I'd rather not be let down, so I won't even be open to opportunities or options. Well, one of the reasons, of, one of the causes, and all historians document this, in regard to the emergence of the Hasidic movement, was the false messiah of Shabtai Tzvi. <clears throat> and this is not a segment getting into Shabtai Tzvi, but we've had our share of disappointments. And therefore, it's really, really painful to be let down. And, and that truth, truthfully causes us to close our hearts. But today's segment, and today's learning that we did this morning, we discussed that you can only be let down of something that you think you know what you're being let down of, but if you don't even know what Mashiach is, and you don't understand what the concept of redemption is, 
and that means by learning it inside, what that actually means, you're basically being disappointed by false expectations or illusions that you set up for yourself. Hmm. Our tradition is, is that the more that you learn about the Mashiach coming, the less of a disappointment you have, because the more that you see that playing an active role in it your It becomes life. less of a fairy tale and more real. Correct. Which, I mean, you and I are broadcasting right now from the, the Judean Hills. That's a very real thing. Is that part of the prophecies? Absolutely. 100%. Well, if this can happen, why can't the big, big picture happen as well? I mean, the way that I see it is he is walking among us now, maybe a general in the army, maybe a, a, a tzaddik nistar that's learning Torah somewhere off in Bnei Brak or in Yerushalayim somewhere that no one, totally humble, no, no Facebook page, no one knows. No one knows. But like... If we believe he's coming, then he's uh, he's alive and walking among us. Correct. And that's why the language is Sheigale. Let him reveal himself, because he's walking among us now. And it's just a matter of time in Eretz right. Israel. You know, this... Uh, Wait, explain that word, the, the Yigale. Yigale means, you know, some people have this uh, misconception that Mashiach is going to, like, fall out of the sky. It's going to happen magically. It's going to be something... No, it's it's going to be like David Amelech was off with sheep. I mean, that's the that's the blueprint. No one considered him to be any. He was so modest. He wasn't even selected amongst the first brothers. It was like, oh, yeah, there's this other one out there. That guy. And he was totally alone, meet to Boded with God, with his sheep, just doing kibud avem, respecting his mother and father. And then eventually it was revealed that, oh, this is the chosen one. He is the one that will be anointed to be the leader over Israel. So, so to now we have a man that's walking around Israel today. We don't know who he is. We don't know where he is. And... It's just a matter of time until he may not know who he is. He may not know who he is. But that's what I'm saying. Hashem, just reveal him to us already because we need a leader now. You know, it's like the end of the era of the Gedolim. We lost Rav Avadia. We, we lost Rav Mordechai Eliyahu. We like, we're looking <clears> around. There's like, we, there's like a vacuum now of leadership. And there's a concept in the mystical writings of Judaism that say that in this vacuum, the Header Lifneha Bria, there's like a vacuum because there's about to, before something is born into the world, there's always a vacuum that precedes it. And so maybe now we're living in this time of like an orphaned generation where the Rebbe is gone and everyone is gone. And uh, But he left us with a promise. He left us with, with a promise. He left us with light, with vision. He left us with empowerment, which is what each of us are, are truly searching for and starving for so much. The Rebbe caused you to feel that your avoda, your godly service counts. And that it could be, it could be, that maybe your mitzvah, the one mitzvah you fall in love with, will tip the scales. They might, he would always quote the famous Rambam in Maimonides, which describes that the, everyone should always look at the world as if it's chetzio zakai and chetzio chayav, which means that it's, how would you say that? The scales need to be tipped. They're exactly equal now. Exactly equal. The scales are and equal. The Rebbe, oh, and the Rebbe, with his campaigns of different mitzvahs, always made you feel like, ha, tune into light, because if you choose to be tuned into light, and take one more mitzvah, one more putting on tefillin, one more Shabbos candle, one more page of Torah, one, one tzedakah, one, one coin, that might tip everything. But for a person to do that, he needs to be in a headspace of light. And what I wanted to do today is I wanted to share one little story from a book, a fascinating book called Towards a Meaningful Life. I'm sure you've seen this before, Rabbi Simon Jacobson, mm -hmm. a bestseller. It's sold, I, I have no idea how many, how many thousands and thousands, but I would highly, highly recommend it. And what it is, 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 is a book based on the wisdom of the Rebbe. I mean, just the, just the, the name itself, the title itself is like something I want to feel like is my title of my life, like Towards a Meaningful Life, that Whatever I'm doing, I might be off, might be wrong, but might be sometimes hitting the mark, sometimes not. I'm towards, I'm going towards a meaningful life. Well, this is a story that'll probably shed a lot of light as into this magical legacy uh, in whose uh, memory we're, we're commemorating today and, and hopefully every day. Listen to this. A teacher who was close to the Rebbe once came to him for advice. His deep emotional pain as a Holocaust survivor was preventing him from fulfilling his teaching responsibilities. There are no words to console you, the Rebbe said, but you cannot allow the Holocaust to continue in your life. He counseled the man with words he had learned from his father-in-law, the previous Rebbe. We are day workers, and our task is to shed light. 
we need not expend our energies in battling darkness. Now, Chavra, friends, wait for the kicker. The following line when I read this was was like, a, you know, in the cartoons when a light bulb comes on. <laughs> we need only create day and night will fade away. We need only create day and night will fade away. Sounds like incredible lyrics for anyone that wants to become very rich right now and write a, <laughs> write a really good song. You know? We need only create day and night will fade away. When the emphasis is on battling darkness, you get tired. When the emphasis is on basking in light, you become more and more awake. The difference between eating more food when you're hungry to learning more Torah when you're spiritually hungry, the Ishbitzer Rebbe explains the more food you eat, the more satiated you are. The more Torah you learn, the hungrier you are. So it seems very clear to me that what the Rebbe was trying and, and successfully accomplished, probably more than any other human being since Moses, was that he didn't just make you feel that your work counts and that it's part of something and that can tip the scales, but it gave direct, clear guidelines as to where energies should be focused on. In a world post-1945, it's very, very difficult to think that my avoda counts and that I can even be attuned into something called light. His smile, when you come to the Rebbe, and there's hundreds of thousands of videos that, that, that document all these moments of, whether it was the dollars on Sunday, Fabrengans, different tishes, different gatherings, you knew that you could go into the battle zone, you could choose, there's two battle zones to go into. One is nighttime and one is daytime. The Rebbe said, we're day workers. His father-in-law said it. We are not, but we are not going to spend our time trying to fight darkness. We're going to shine our candle as light as, we, as, as as strong as we can. Yeah, I think the great masters um, really understood the depths of what it is to bring light. That you know, Rabbi Nachman says, just to bring one small candle lights up a whole dark room. And there's a quote from Rav Cook that I think about quite a lot because there's. There's so much to fight in this world. We have the Hamas, and we have Hezbollah, and we have just secular par- parades in Jerusalem. We just There's so much to do. Who do we fight? And uh, Rav Cook writes like this, Those who are pure and righteous do not complain about evil, but increase justice. They do not complain about godlessness, but increase faith. They do not complain about ignorance, but increase wisdom. And are we going to fight against and protest against Oslo? Are we going to build communities in Judea and Samaria? Are we going to uh, complain that there's assimilation? Are we going to go out and spread Torah to the world? So it's the, we just that is, I think, the Rebbe's ultimate uh, message was Miftzaim. Go out and just spread light, spread chesed. Focus on that. Focus on spreading the light because a little bit of light banishes so much darkness. Oh, you bring one Jew a little bit closer. Bring one person a little bit closer to feeling that they're a son to our Father in Heaven. Just one more thing that people feel like we're brothers and sisters, a part of a family nation. You've done the whole world. The whole world. I once, uh, well, many times this happened, but one time specifically, I remember it. I used to be, I used to travel from LA to San Francisco to perform at the the Grand Hanukkah lighting. One of the things the Rebbe did was that Hanukkah, the, the holiday of light and of like just pushing away darkness, is is a very big thing in Chabad where they do massive, huge menorah lightings outdoors. Have you ever seen? Anything? Sure, I've seen it all over the world, right? One of the greatest ones is in San Francisco, and it's called the Bill Graham Menorah Lighting. Ever you know Bill Graham? Was no. Bill Graham, for those of you hippies from back in the day, you know who Bill Graham was. Bill Graham was a yid. He was killed, I think, in a helicopter crash or a plane crash, and he was the promoter of brands like the Grateful Dead. And he was he was amazing. He was an amazing mm. individual, and his son David was part of the menorah lightings we used to do back then. The Hanukkah candle lighting ceremony led by Rabbi Yosef Langer was a treat. I did it from the age of... Uh, 18 to like, I don't even, I don't know, to my mid-20s. It was very special for me. Um, and one year, Carlos Santana was the guest of honor to come really? and light the menorah. <laughs> yeah, I actually have, if you want, friends, I'll send you the pictures of me and Carlos. We're up, we're up there and he's lighting, he lit the menorah. He came on stage, he was talking about the angels, Gavriel, Micha. It was so far out, so trippy. But when you're standing on stage and you're looking out into this massive sea of, of hungry, starving, spirit, spiritually starving faces, and then you saw the Rebbe, you saw what the Rebbe did, why? Because what was the focus on Hanukkah, light? What the Chabad rabbi did is that he gave out 
thousands of candles to everyone in the crowd. Now today, you probably wouldn't have been allowed to do it because of the safety hazard, dangerous, right? But back then, what I saw was he had a torch. He carried a torch. And everyone basically came and tried to get their candle into the torch and then pass the flame to someone else. But what you see from the stage looking out as that's happening, you see the spreading of a sea of light. Wow. Slowly, slowly. At that moment, I saw, wow, the Rebbe, you were the torch. And you didn't wait for people to come to you necessarily. You sent people, you sent your emissaries out to take their candles and go more and more so that the whole world is one massive sea of candles. You know, I'm just looking here at your Aron Sarim, your bookshelves. You know, every Jewish home has a good bookshelf. And I'm just looking at the Chabad section. It would take a lifetime. It would take, if, I, if a Jew just focused, just on learning Chabad Torah, it would take his entire life. And even then, he would probably not be able to finish it all. If he just his whole life, all day long, every day, just that, and to think that, uh, I mean, how much Torah was brought into the world. Crazy. It's um, unparalleled. Crazy. There is nothing like that anywhere else yeah. by any other Rav ever. In Chabad, it's, it's, it, it's huge. And the Hasidim wrote down every single letter he uttered, whether it was just mundane conversations that he had with people, or talks, or tish, whatever it was, because they, because they saw a candle. They saw empowerment in every word that he said. And therefore, every single word of that of empowerment should be documented because that's what we need. Those of you sitting on your couches in Wyoming, Wyoming right now, or on your boats in Sydney, or on your couches in the Shomron, life could be great, life could be a little bit difficult, but you could always use more empowerment. Today, the third day of Tammuz, is a day to plug into empowerment because of the saintly light of Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. So I want to sing one more nigga. Because the Rebbe was very big. You know, while you're getting your yeah. guitar, I want to just share one thing that the, the Rebbe changed my life in. Please. You know, and I found it in probably, you know, the most secular institution in uh, Israel, uh, Hebrew University. I, they were giving a course on third generation Hasidus, which is the beginning of Chabad and all that happened in that time. And uh, I just wanted to learn not just the Torahs, but I wanted to know like the background, the history. I just wanted like an in-depth uh understanding of how Hasidut grow in the beginnings of Chabad. And uh, the professor at the time said that the Alter Rebbe, the beginning of Chabad, set in a practice that the Lubavitcher Rebbe, of course, continued, that they would spend, I believe it was either four or eight hours every day writing. Mm -hmm. And that's why Igros HaKodesh, the letters that the Rebbe wrote, he spent hours every day in the practice, in the meditation of taking our thoughts and putting it down on paper. It would either be in answering people's questions, in writing his own sfarim, in writing his own books, in writing his own art, but spending the time writing. And when I heard that, I began my own personal journal. Obviously, I'm not like a Rebbe, so I'm not spending eight hours a day. But every day, writing a Torah that I learned, writing an experience that touched my heart, and uh, it really has changed my life because I'm able to now refer back to what was three months ago. My days just melt into each other. And then having that ability of taking that olama machshava, the ideas, and then bringing it into the world and making it a little bit more real. Uh, for me, um, it, yeah, it was such a giant it's step beautiful. in my own personal service. And it's entirely because of the Rebbe and because of um, his guidance on how to be a servant of oh, God. It's beautiful. Ashrecha, thank you for sharing. So this is one of the classic, classic melodies of the Rebbe. That if you had to choose one, which everyone knows in Chabad and all over the world, this is the Rebbe's nigun, which speaks about the thirst that my soul has to be close to Hashem. <laughs> Did it I, did it I die, I die, I die, I die, 
तेरे राधा So I just want to end off by sharing with all of you, like Jeremy just shared a personal reflection. I want to share one last personal reflection. It must have been a few years after that I had passed away, probably nearly 20 years ago. I was a teenager, and like every teenager, thinking that my world is the most complicated one, that I have the most issues, and it's me, 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 and my complexity. And there was some sincerity to that, like there really is. And I was just I was just tasting the Rebbe, really, for the first time. I was too young when he passed away. I was 14. I was in, I was in the camp, Chabad camp, when I was little. I felt like I was inducted into the Tzivas Hashem, the Rebbe's camp, for, the army for kids. But it didn't, you know, at 14, what do you know? Even today at 37, what do I know? But definitely then, what do I know? So anyway... That one night when I was about 16, 17 years old, I had this really crazy dream. And in the dream, I was waiting by 770, where the Rebbe's headquarters were. And I was waiting for him to get out of his car. He had just pulled up. And he pulls up and he comes out of his car. And somehow, I follow him right inside into his chamber. And there's a bunch of people around him. And I really wanted to get his attention. So I stopped him and I said, Rebbe! And I said to him in Yiddish, Rebbe, ich bin a zebrochene Kohen. Which means, I'm a depressed Kohen. <laughs> a zebrochen means depressed. I'm, I'm, I'm a depressed priest. I don't know why I said that. But I wish we had a, a video right now, not just audio. Because the Rebbe looked at me and smiled and said to me, No, you're not. And he gave me one of these, which is his famous hand motion, where he basically, when he would try to get the crowd to take the nigger to the next level, he would take his fist in his hand and just move from side to side with this notion of, let's go. Friends, I can't explain it to you, but for me, whenever I need to come out of my own little dark place, I go back to that dream so often. I see that arm, and I hear those words saying, no, you're not. And I have the whole world in my hands. Praiseworthy is the people with such saints amongst them in their, in, their, in, their, in their nation. Praiseworthy are the people who truly believe that one little candle can change the whole world and that one mitzvah can tip the scales. So friends, wherever you are today, take one mitzvah, one extra mitzvah. But don't just do it because you heard a rabbi, two rabbis tell you, do mitzvahs. Do it with a smile, because you never know, since you never know which mitzvah is going to tip the scales, that Rebbe always told us, treat each mitzvah as that that might be that one. You're here, Rabbi Amen. Soon and in our days, right now. Amen. If you'd like to contact me, which I always love hearing from each and every one of you, shlomo at thelandofisrael.com. You want to contact Rabbi Jeremy Gimpel, jeremy at thelandofisrael.com. Until the next time, shalom uvracham. Martyrdom does not end something, said Indira Gandhi. It is only a beginning. And for me, each episode is a new beginning. 
because I'm telling a story of the past set to build a present identity that's motivated to make the future of which we dream. I'm Rav Mike Foyer, and this is The Jewish Story. Listen to The Jewish Story with Rav Mike Foyer on thelandofisrael.com.